Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. In your last challenge, you all had to do what, what Cabby and myself and Tim McAuliffe and a few other people around here are very familiar with. Plays of the week. We've all gone through the video, every inch of it, and we're gonna get to that in just a few moments. Sean, yes, sir. please step out front okay. for us. I would now like to ask Meg, if you could also step forward, stand right next to Sean, please. Thank you. Phil. Yes. Do the exact same thing, please. Right here. And finally, Casey. Also step down and stand next to Phil, please. I'm not done with the rearranging. Brent, if you can go next to Rick. Austin, next to him on the top step, please. Brent, overall, based on what I saw in the Plays of the Week challenge, I thought you did the best. I think you were 1A and Austin was 1B, and it was really close. But Austin, you gotta be careful about crossing that line. Yes, sir. And you're, you're a very entertaining guy, but sometimes, Sometimes it's important to hold back. Rick. We told you at the last eliminations that you really needed to step up. You're a guy who has been in the bottom three every single time. For the first time in this competition, I thought to myself, I could see Rick doing highlights on the score. Thank you. So the good news for you, all three of you, Rick, Brent, Austin, you are going through. Thank you. Thank you very much. Walking into the elimination ceremony, I'm a shoe in in my mind that I'm in the bottom three, that it's me, Meg, and Casey. So when Greg told me I can actually see you, you know, doing a highlight for the score, I, I don't think I've, I've ever been, I've, I haven't been that happy in quite some time, to be honest. I mean, that's just like everything I've ever wanted to do, everything I've ever felt that I could accomplish. I mean, he said it in those words. I mean, I was speechless. It was, uh, it was amazing. So three are safe. Four of you obviously still face elimination. If I can ask all four of you to step up. Quite an interesting final four we're left with, isn't it, Greg? None of these four have been in this position before. Sean. Yes. You were a lot looser this time. It actually looked like you were having fun at one point. Yeah. You were smiling and seemed to be enjoying what you were doing. You need to do a lot more of that. You still have a long way to go in that department. Okay. And, and you can't call me Mr. Sansoni for your stand this competition. All right, Greg. You gotta call me Greg. Greg, from now on. Well, then you're going to get that opportunity because you're going through to the next challenge. Thank you. And then there were three. Greg, who are you most surprised to see in this position right now? I'm surprised to see all of them in this position right now, to be totally honest with you. But based on our discussions in recent days, the person that surprises me to be in this position the most is you, Phil. Because we talked about being yourself. Yes. That's what we focused on. Did you feel like you were actually being yourself during the plays of the week? I do feel like I was. Like, in the, that was my main focus, like to figure out who Phil is. I'll tell you. To this point in the competition, there has been no greater debate than you, your future here. Right. It, it, it has been, it is something that was discussed and it got pretty intense okay. in the deliberations. And I know that you had some strong opinions on that. So I, I, I'm a, I'm rooting for you. And when we were deliberating, I was on an island. It was me. Okay. On, on your behalf. I think you have a, a, a strong natural charisma and a personality and I watched the Streeter uh, segment, and I think you're very conversational, and I like that about you. And I, and I think that on camera, 
I think you might be more in tune to what we are here at the score because we're personality driven. Yes. More so than uh, Meg and Casey. But it's gotta be his personality. I'm not convinced that it's his personality we're seeing. I think we're seeing the personality of a guy who thinks he should be acting the way a guy on TV should act. I feel like okay. it's the showmanship that's coming out that, and I like to compare it to Austin in the sense that he does have that showmanship, but I think that you are trying to push it too much. Right to what you're trying to get across to everybody. It's hard to relate to that is all, like the bottom line of that, that it's hard for people to connect with you on that level and to have that likability factor, right. especially with other dudes and it's all guys that watch the channel for the most part. Right. Casey, you smiled at the beginning of that challenge, which changed <laughs> everything. You seemed so much more relaxed when you did that. Here's the issue. I'm starting to wonder whether you can actually get to the point that we need you to be at by the end of this competition. I think you have all the tools to get there at some point, but I'm starting to wonder if, if, if it's gonna be too soon for you to get here now. Maybe, maybe this is just not the right time for you. It is the right time for me. I just finished four years of school because this is what I want to do. I just graduated and, and I don't have nearly as much experience as Meg, I can say that to you, but I know I can get there. Like this is. There's never been a doubt in my mind, this is what I want to do and I will do it and I'm going to be good at it and I've gotten positive feedback as well as criticism but I know that this is the job, this is the career I want, this is what I want to do. So, where is this? I love this. Where's yes, this? I love Where, this Casey. Where's this Casey? When he needs to get in front of the camera. To be honest, I'm trying to find, I don't want to be, I'm trying to find sort of a way to not be too relaxed like you're saying but not be too stiff when I'm on camera. Don't, don't I, think of it as relaxed, think of it as comfortable, Think of it as confident and think of it to a certain degree of being assertive because you have to have that level of confidence in yourself to be able to portray yourself in a certain way that's not going to make it look like you don't care. Meg, I have some stats for you. I asked the guys to, cons to uh, compile some statistics from your performance. You went a minute and 55 seconds without saying a word during one stretch. Over the course of two minutes and 50 seconds, you said three words, and you were actually prompted by your teammates in order to get those three words out. In the plays of the week, the running time for those this week, it was less than four minutes, which means for an overwhelming majority of the time, you weren't even participating in the challenge. I know, and if, uh, if you actually watch my face during it, like, <laughs> I go from like finishing my first highlights to just hitting rock bottom because I'm like this is terrible like where am I you know like and I'm like should I interject I don't want to step over them and I just I yeah I kind of felt lost like great <laughs> you know I could not believe what I was watching I mean think about hypothetically you win this competition we have to do plays of the week cabbies away Tim can't do it you're gonna go cold on me for one minute 55 seconds I, I want to kind of explain what happened there. To tell you the truth, like, I wasn't confident in my group. And I, like, all I do on a daily basis is comment on what my co-host is saying. Like, that's my job, you know? So uh, I felt very uncomfortable relying on them to leave an opening. Or, like, we had to go very scripted. And I didn't feel comfortable doing that, but I thought that that was the best way to get the best out of all three of us. Well, I don't know how scripted you really had to be. I mean, if you've seen what we do. Yeah. But in fairness, in fairness, they've, they've never done this before. True. And I, I, well, I, and listen, I know, but I know what you're saying. You guys, it's a pass for but, that. But here's the thing, Sid. I think that one of the differences is that you guys all have each other's back, and I'm not sure that was happening in that group. I'm not sure that was happening in that group. What, what was going on in that group? Because there's something going on with the three of you between Rick, you, and Meg. Rick, you trying to say something? Yeah, is that what's going on? You want to say something? Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. yeah I I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'd love to bring Rick back out. Just, just okay, bring him yeah, out. I just want to hear what he has to give say. Give me a shot of Rick. Somebody give me a shot. So of I want to know Rick. what happened to that group. Something is going on there. Clearly, yeah. I don't know what it is. What happened? Hang on. I hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We got to get him in a spot here. All right. Shot of Rick on four. Please. Thank you. Go ahead. Tell me what happened or what's going on. I sat down and. The initial process when I got paired with them is okay, you know, let's make this work, let's do this, right? I mean, if we put off a great performance, three people, if, it, if we kill it, we're gonna kill it. But every idea I tried to throw in, Meg would just shut down right away. Give me, give me an example of the idea. I'll give you an example. So you know how you guys will go do a little banter before plays of the week starts, like I shot in the score mobile, iPhone promo, and then I said, hey, let's go for a, 
on to another surfing edition of Plays of the Week, British Bulldog, you know, just something. And I go, and then the kiss, we're gonna do the kiss of the Bernard Longer. It's as if I spoke to her in Chinese. She just, she didn't wanna listen to a word I said. And I don't know why. Casey and I actually worked great together as well. Like, but there was just, there was some ideas, like the surfing with the bulldog. I wanted my own line because I was the one doing it. And with the kiss the ball for Bernard Langer, like, I, you know, I said ball on ball action on the dance floor. I, you know, I, I wanted to have my own thing. So, well, I acknowledged him and I said, yeah, you know, Rick, that's a good idea, but I kind of want to make this thing my own. So let's work on some other stuff. And there was a lot of times that I said, Rick, that's a great idea. And that we used his idea, but I just felt like somebody had to kind of take the lead and kind of control everything just so that we weren't going over here, then over here, then over here and not making sense. Give me 30 seconds, then you gotta go just back. one more thing. It, it's, it's, okay, during the Samir Nasri bit, Meg was supposed to come in on one of my lines. Now, I know I didn't say it properly, but she left me out to dry, straight up. What was she supposed to say? She was supposed to say, I, I said, uh, three FC Porto players have their pants on the ground. And she was supposed to say something like, you're supposed to kiss them before you know you do that. And she just didn't say a word. And I look at her and I'm just saying, what's going on? At least say something. Yeah, the, the line was delivered improperly. And it just, the way that it was delivered, it wouldn't make sense to interject with that exact line. So I just kind of, I bailed on it. Okay, thanks Rick, you can go back. Thank you. Okay, I need Rick walking out, okay? Yeah. I gotta tell you that for the first time since we've been doing this, I'm not sure what to do. After the break, it's obvious who Rick would vote off, but will the judges agree? I'm gonna have to stick my neck out in, on the line for a couple of years. You won't be drafted. I didn't expect you guys to be in this position at this point in the competition, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that it's gotten to this, but I'm gonna have to stick my neck out in, on the line for a couple of you. So, so when I do that, you have to deliver for me. You have to deliver for me because if you don't, I'm gonna look back on this and say, at this juncture of the competition, I made a mistake. I came in today to yeah. review the challenges. Yeah. And I said, Phil, I, I feel strongest about Phil, yeah. I'm expecting big things from Rick because he, he, I called him out last time and he needed to do it. And I was expecting Brent to bounce back today. Right. Those are the three guys I, I thought. And, and, and those guys delivered. I just, I thought, here's the thing. Here's, here's the, the, what it comes down to is this. I don't know that whether I work with you for a long period of time, whether or not you'll be able to break out of that delivery that you have this affect in and, and whether you can claw back. I. There's something about Casey. There's something about Casey that I I don't know what it is. I it's it's the, it's an intangible that I just feel like she's got it in her that that it's my responsibility here and their responsibility to draw it out of her. I, I'm not putting all the onus on us, by the way. You better start <laughs> delivering say, can, in a hurry because otherwise you're not going to get that chance. I I am totally I'm leveling with you, leveling with you. Like I feel like I can honestly do this. Like I am not stubborn. I will change it up. I can. The reason I may have seen out there and over enthusiastic because I thought that's, that, that's how I would react to these plays. Phil, you won't be drafted. Honestly, I, I, I really hope that, you know, you're going to see my face again, and I'm going to be different. Like, this is something brand new to me. Phil, you're, you're a real gentleman, and we appreciate all the time and effort you put into this, but this season, it's not going to work out. Time for you to go. safe to say the most emotional cut we've ever made. I'm happy to report, as you know, you guys made it. You just made it, but you're through. Congrats. Head to the pen. Thank you. You're safe.